Cheryl, you have written three books of poetry. How did you do that? Can you talk to us about this? It was an amazing process. When I look back on how quickly these three books came out, I'm not actually sure how it <laughs> happened. But, um, you know, I first started writing some poetry, I guess, in the 80s. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't really poetry, but I would write uh, little poems for birthday cards for my friends, for people that I really loved. Mm-hmm. And I would be thinking, what can I write for them on their card? And very often I would hear this little poem. It would be just a little ditty, you know. Yeah. And then I started writing some other poems. I mean, there's actually a poem in my first book that I wrote for Stephen before I even met him. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, so there were, there were these poems that did have a way of coming out. But these three books, Poetics of Soul and Fire, Bridge to the Other World, and Idols from the Garden of Spiritual Delights and Healing, <laughs> the longest title, all came out at once. I had gone for a healing from a woman who has a lot of inner sight. Mm-hmm. And in the process of our conversation, she said, I don't know why, but she said, I'm hearing book, book, book. She said, three, three. <laughs> and, and she said, are you writing book, book, book? And I said, not that I'm aware of. Um, and she said, well, I don't know, maybe it's like three chapters of a book or something. All I can tell you is I'm hearing book, book, book. And I had been writing poetry. A friend of mine told me in April, and this was 2015, she said, April is write a poem a day month. Mm. And I thought, well, that sounds like fun, because I'd been sort of writing poems off and on. I thought, I'll take the challenge. So I started writing a poem a day, and it was usually in the evening. I tend to do a lot of my my writing at night. Mm -hmm. And so I would sit on my bed, which is where most of the poetry (laughs) came from, me writing, sitting on my bed, and I would just listen. And sometimes I would get a title. Sometimes I would get a first line or part of a first line. And I would write it in my journal. And then I would just keep writing. That's beautiful. And sometimes images would come, sometimes experiences. And I would just write what was going on. You know, there's this wonderful phrase that I got from John O'Donohue, who's one of my favorite Irish poets. I was wondering who your favorites were. Yeah, well, John O'Donohue was one of the favorites. Um, He was an Irish priest and poet and philosopher. And he had this phrase called the music of what's happening. Oh, that is what poetry is. Mm -hmm. And so that's really a big part of my inspiration. So when I was writing a poem a day, it was the music of what's happening, either the inspiration of something a little bit more spiritual or cosmic, you Mm -hmm. know, from that day. Uh, or it could could have come from an experience that right. day. It just sort of captures the beauty of the moment ongoingly. Mm-hmm. Right, because that's, that's one of the things about poetry, is that it's so immediate. Mm-hmm. And I think it's my favorite kind of writing, because for one thing, I'm just writing it for me. You know, you can't write, well, maybe other people can, but I don't write poetry like... I think people are really going to love this one. I have no (laughs) idea. It just has to come from within. It has to come from within. And because it's so immediate and it feels like maybe the most authentic thing I do, Mm -hmm. I love writing poetry because it puts me in that place of real authenticity. You can feel that in these books. Oh, I'm glad. Who are your other favorite poets? I love um, David White, who Mm -hmm. is another British-Irish poet. And I've been to a couple of workshops of his and at, at a tour that oh, he did really? in Ireland. Yeah, and he was, he was amazing. And he and John O'Donohue were actually really good friends. Wordsworth. Um, oh, yeah. You know what? One of the reasons I love Wordsworth is his, uh, his visuals, mm-hmm. the picture that he paints of these places in the Lake District, you know, which was his home. And I love the fact that he brings... His, his experience, it's almost like he brings his consciousness. You know, people can go mm-hmm. out in nature, and it's just nature, or they ride their noisy machines through nature or something. What Wordsworth did was he brought this really refined consciousness to nature. And mm-hmm. it's the conversation. I remember that. You remember that? Mm-hmm. It's like this conversation that he has with nature, that nature is alive to him. Totally. And that's one of the reasons that, that I really love that. Um, I he ha- sort of opens a door that you, that you might not have seen on your own. And yeah. I noticed that about this poetry, too. It's the same. Which brings me to poetics. Yes. Can you talk to us about what is poetics? Yes. It's 
uh, it's a term that I'm still working on defining. (laughs) And again, I actually found that term uh, in John O'Donohue's work. He talks about a poetics of, of, of spirituality. He talks about even the, the poetics of a landscape. I, worked, I looked up the word poetics, and it actually means to create. So for me, every person has a poetics. Exactly. Is that we all have a way of creating. You know, I, I used to teach critical thinking and creative problem solving. And when you ask people, how many of you are creative? You know, it's like sitting on their hands <laughs> like nobody. And so how many of you ever had a good idea? Well, the hands will go up. And I said, how many of you have ever made something, you know, or made something out of the idea, created a business, a company, you know, exactly. or a new idea? What a good way of yeah. addressing that. That's your poetics. Mm. That's what you came into this life to create. I love that. So the poetics of Soul and Fire, that's the first poetry book. That was really what came to me is that this is the fire of my soul. Of who you are. Of who I am. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was wondering if you'd read to us the first poem. It's, it's such a favorite of mine. I, to me, when I was trying to understand poetics of Soul and Fire, this poem did it for me. I will. I will. Um, and this po- this poem actually came from a picture that we've got in the book. It's by Waterhouse, and it's called the Crystal Ball. And when I first saw this picture, I went, "That's me. That's <laughs> me as a poet." And so this also happens sometimes. And there are a number of of poems in these books that we found an image that we wanted to put in the book. And I wrote a poem about the image. Amazing. So this is the first time that happened. So this is called The Seer of Soul and Fire. And she's holding a crystal ball that she's looking into. Gazing into crystal, she muses. Worlds and wonders swim before her. Death resting on the table at her side. The inevitable presence that reveals life's worth and meaning. Eternity stirs anew in the orb. Beckoning from the unknown, she feels it. A future from the past. A glimmering sense of purpose. A dream of communion with the beloved. The found that was lost. And yet the one still truly here. Destiny proclaims its work in the glass. Oneness forever sealed in the heart of her ancient calling. I love that. I love it. So what happened with this book that then happened in the other two books is that the first poem gave me the section titles for the oh. rest of the rest of the book. And so there would be sort of a theme for that section mm-hmm. and the poems that I wrote would go in there. It's kind of like an inner adventure. It's totally an inner adventure, <laughs> absolutely, because I really have no idea, you know. And people have asked me, it's like, well, is it easy to write a poem or is it hard? And yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> it's sometimes, easy and hard. Sometimes it's real easy. Some of the first poems, I mean, as a matter of fact, I got a little cocky because when I was writing this poem a day, it's like, yeah, hey, no I, can write a, I can write a poem a day. This is, you know, I don't know why people struggle over writing poetry. This is, it. Like, well, just wait. You know, it's like that was the easy, the easy part sort of came first. Yeah. And as the poems got deeper and more refined and deeper meaning, Mm -hmm. they got more difficult. I can imagine. And fortunately, I have a really good team of people that work with me because a number of poems would start with the word and. You know, sometimes people would say, I don't understand (laughs) this poem at all. Where did this come from? Uh, well, there was a missing first page. Exactly. So I'd have to go back and write the, the first page. Oh, the, I yeah. had no idea. That is amazing. Yeah. So the second book is Bridge to the Other Bridge World. Bridge to the Other World. It's I love like this a cover. <laughs> fairy tale. It really is. Yeah. And these poems went deeper. You know, Poetics of Soul and Fire is a little bit more immediate. Mm-hmm. You know, there's more. There's more love poems in here. I, uh, I read something recently that they said, love is necessary for poets because it brings them inspiration. 
And I had someone read, read Poetics when I first published it, and they said, oh, this is just all about love. And I went, yeah, actually it is, you know, that there, there's more poems about here, about being in love. The poems in Bridge started getting a little deeper. You know, some of them are, are longer poems. And that was really the progression of these three books. I got the titles all at once after I saw my friend, you know, when I was writing. When she said book, book, book. book, book. Because I think that was in, like, July. And by that time, I'd been writing a poem a day in April and in May and in June. Amazing. And I, thought, I wonder how many poems I actually have. And that's when we discovered that... Uh, I had enough, certainly, for the first two books. Idols is a little different. It kind of is its own thing. But when I started putting the two books together, I got the three titles. Oh, Poetics of Soul and Fire, Bridge to the Other World, and then Idols of from the Garden of Spiritual Delights and Healing. And that is actually the progression. The oh. poetics of what did I come here to create was the expression of my soul and fire, Bridge to the Other World is the book that bridges exactly. because Idols takes place in the garden on of the, the etheric of the other world that people go to when they pass over. Oh, that's amazing. I know. I had no idea. When you started. I had no idea when I started, which is kind of the theme of all of my writing. It's like I'm the last to... You're be being led. Yeah, I'm the last to know yeah. actually of what the next thing is going to be. I just have to keep writing and paying attention and listening would you say you received the same sort of inspiration on these three books? How did one differ from the other? Like to go from Soul mm -hmm. and Poetics mm -hmm. and Fire to the bridge. Did that take an interchange in you? or I'm sure it did. I mean, it was all happening pretty quickly. But I think because it, I did have this intention of writing a poem a day and that it lasted the th three months oh, and see. then continued because we published Poetics in October of 2015, we published Bridge in February of 2016. Oh, that's so and fast. And Idols we did, I think, in April of 2016. So in a way, this is like one journey. It's one journey. 